we are, um, as part of our Art and Faith Lent series, we've been landing on these various art forms and just wondering how they shape us um, and how they might lead us to encountering God in a new way. So we've looked at music and we looked at visual art, and today we're kind of wondering about drama and acting and the medium of visual storytelling kind of through embodying characters. Um, and the medium of a play or drama is one of the most powerful mediums we have, and it, it kind of always has been, right? You, we are shaped by the shows we watch, the movies. They tell us stories that we, we think about and we frame how we see reality, often through how we have seen a story played out. Um, I think it's, a, like kids even do this. Kids play things, right? They play going to the doctor. They play school. They play house. They, they, we act things out because it's how we learn. I think drama, when I was thinking about this this week as we were doing this, uh, drama does this thing where it engages our senses, like our sight, our sound, touch, and then it also engages in emotions. And I think those two things, when you, when you pair together senses and emotions, they are what kind of make a story stick in my mind. So I think drama and plays and shows are kind of these incredibly powerful storytelling tools and they can change cultures. Now, that being said, what does this might have to do with our faith? What does this have to do with the story we live out of? Um, and one of my favorite authors, and I know I've talked about her before, but Dorothy Sayers, she's a scholar and a novelist and a playwright and a Christian apologist way before her time. She was also a Jesus feminist way before her time. She was friends with C.S. Lewis and wrote lots of um, contentious letters to G.K. Chesterton. <laughs> I think they were probably the, had a very similar personality to each other, so they fought. Um, but she wrote a series of 12 radio plays for BBC Radio that were broadcast in 1941. So that's right in the middle of the Second World War. Um, and then later in 1944, those last five plays of that cycle um, were, were played again on the BBC. And those are the death and resurrection stories. Um, so the, these radio plays, sorry, I missed that part. The radio plays were a series of 12 plays around the life of Christ. And this project became this like really big storm of controversy, even before it was broadcast, because um, while some people complained of it being like Christian propaganda on the BBC, the biggest outcry against it came from Christians who said that the BBC was committing blasphemy for allowing Christ to be impersonated by a human actor. And also, they complained about Sarah's approach to the material and how she took the story from the kind of the, the high church uh, language of the King James Bible at the time, and she put the story back into the words and the sounds of, of the people around them, M middle, middle of the road English people at the time, <laughs> British people. Uh, Sayers, who felt that the inherent drama of the story kind of got a little bit muffled by familiarity being so familiar with the story, hearing it all the time, but also a general kind of failure to think of the characters in the story as real people. And so she was determined to give this play like a, a realistic, identifiable, identifiable characters with emotions and motivations and ways of speaking. And even her decision to have the characters talk in like contemporary language was it by itself the cause of so much disquiet um, amongst you know, the people used to those King James Bibles versions of Jesus' words. <laughs> in, this is a funny fact to me. I just find this funny because you can see we still do things like this. But this, um, the BBC playing these plays was uh, criticized by some Christians because to the point where one group said it was the cause of the fall of Singapore in 1942. It was a sign of God's displeasure, the fall of Singapore, with the BBC series which is just funny how we do that, right? We always seem to make things like that happen. Um, so anyways, maybe we are more used to hearing the story, hearing the, our story, the God story in regular language, 80 years later, dramatized. But I wonder if we could still wonder at how much the truth of the gospel stories might be like apprehended more, maybe not under comprehended more, but apprehended more um, as we engage with these imaginations and put ourselves in the story. Uh, so, we are going to have fun with our scriptures uh, and, and kind of try to hear them in a different way this week and act them out. Now, it's not a full production. We don't have costume changes or anything like that. But we do have some readers who are going to come up and, and read the words we've heard often out loud together. Um, so, I'll, yeah, I'll invite them up. And just so you know, in the version of the script we have, it's all scripture 
words just put into the different characters, and it's a combination of words from Matthew and from Luke to tell the story of Palm Sunday. All right, now you've been told when you see crowd, that is you in the crowd, okay? You're going to have to say it loud, and there's instructions, and you have a role to play. But as we are um, just getting ready and going to do this together, I... <laughs> um, Ask yourselves a few questions. These are always questions to be great when, to ask yourself when you're reading scripture, but even as you're experiencing scripture in this way, ask yourself, where would you be in the crowd? Who would you be in this crowd? Would, yeah, who would you be? What would you be reacting to? How would you be responding? This is a great question to ask when we are reading scripture. Where am I in this drama? Okay, so I'm going to pass it over to my friends and... Uh, We'll see how this goes. <laughs> awesome. All right. Jesus comes to Jerusalem, a surprising kind of king, based on Matthew 21, 1 to 17, and Luke 19, 28 to 48. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them, bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs these creatures and they will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very very large crowd then spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of Jesus, and those that followed shouted, rides to Jerusalem, no one can hinder thee. Hosanna to King David's son, no one can hinder thee. He rides upon a donkey small, no one can hinder thee. The King of Peace and the Lord of all, no one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, no one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, right on, no one can hinder thee. The children sing and they dance and shout, no one can hinder thee. If they won't praise the rocks, cry out, no one can hinder thee. King Jesus done just what he said, no one can hinder thee. He healed the sick and he raised the dead, no one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, no one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, right on, no one can hinder thee. 
The light of love shines on his face. No one can hinder thee. He offers all his pardoning grace. No one can hinder thee. Come join the throng, your voices raise. No one can hinder thee. The King of Peace deserves our praise. No one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, no one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, right on, no one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, no one can hinder thee. Right on, King Jesus, right on. No one can hinder thee. No one can hinder thee. No one can hinder thee. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, Even you, even you had only known of this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Jesus then entered the temple area and began driving out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Okay. Yeah, to the The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and Jesus healed them. But when the chief priests and teachers of the law saw the wonder-filled things he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? Yes. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise? And so... Jesus left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night with his friends. <laughs> 